Samsung makes some of my favorite Android tablets with different specs at different price points and they're all great to drawing thanks to this, the S Pen. My name is Brad and I review tech for professional wrestlers. Yeah! The script is wrong again. It's supposed to say I review tech for creative professionals. So you're saying I can't use this? Uh, I mean, you can if you want. I like drawing too. So let's talk about Samsung's current Android lineup. I'm just looking at tablets you can draw draw on, the ones that come with the S Pen. So, starting at the top, there is the Galaxy Tab S8. This is currently their best and brightest tablet, literally brightest. It comes in three sizes, an 11 inch, that's the S8, a 12.4 inch S8 Plus, and the gigantic 14.6 inch S8 Ultra. The next tier down is the Galaxy Tab S7 FE. It has the larger plus size 12.4 inch screen, but with the lower specs to keep the price down. And at the budget end of things, we have the 11 inch Galaxy Tab S6 Lite. I see more tablets than that. What are these Tab A things? Okay, so there are two categories of Samsung tablets, the S line and the A line. I'm focusing here on the S line because those are the tablets that work with the S Pen. The Tab A line is cheaper. Couldn't I just buy one of those and then pick up an S Pen? Save a little scratch. Nope, the S Pen needs sensors underneath the screen in order to work properly, so nothing will happen if you try to write on one of these tablets. Whoa, this is light. I have to be careful not to crush it with my mighty meat paws. Yeah, the S Pen is pretty small and light, but I think it's a comfortable pen to use. It's actually about the same size as a drawing pencil, but not nearly as big as, say, a standum Wacom stylus. Some of the pens you will find tucked into Samsung's phones are really small and not comfortable to use for long stretches, whereas these pens, they're just fine. So let's start by looking at those S8 tablets first. I mentioned that these come in three <laughs> sizes, and apart from the size, there isn't really much difference. Well, okay, there is one big difference in the smallest size version, the 11 inch. That only has an LCD TFT panel. The screens on the larger S8s are a beautiful Super AMOLED display. The AMOLED displays are just so rich. Not that the LCD screens are bad, but since they do charge a premium even for the smallest S8 tablet, it would have been nice to see that rolled out here as well. The rest of the specs fall in line. This has a Snapdragon 8450 processor in all three. These displays are 120 hertz, which makes animation feel smoother, more crisp. This also makes the pen feel more responsive, basically less lag. You have a 13 megapixel and a six megapixel widescreen camera along the back and a 12 megapixel ultra wide across the front, which can do 1080p video calls. The camera is also centered for landscape, not portrait, like you might find on an iPad, which gives you a more straight on view. The Ultra even has a notch cut out of it, which at first looks a little bit weird on a tablet, but it never really got in the way for me. So it wasn't really a problem. Since these are some high-end tablets, they have a lot of bells and whistles. The S Pen has a battery and you can use it as a selfie remote, basically. There's a couple other features here as well, but they're more novelties than practical things. You also have fast charging batteries, fingerprint sensors under the screen, and some surprisingly good speakers here. Here's what to keep in mind when you're picking one of these. The Ultra might be great for someone with comically large hands, but it might not be great for you. I love the Ultra and even the Plus for drawing. Having that extra screen real estate is really nice. Even apps with a lot of interface elements like Clip Studio Paint or Krita look good here. But for playing games, unless you're using a controller and setting it up far away from you, it might be too big, especially if you're using touch controls. For holding, reading a book or an article, it's also kind of big. Maybe if you're holding this in your hands and watching a movie, might not be ideal, whereas the smaller S8 is going to excel at those things. Which is right for you is really going to depend on what you're going to be using this for. But it's worth pointing out, with such high-end specs, any Android app you throw at any three of these tablets is going to run beautifully. Now, I have links to all these tablets down below in the description. They link to Best Buy, who is the sponsor of today's video. Before picking up any kind of electronics, no matter what it is, like these tablets, that I'm talking about here today, or maybe a TV, video games, anything, I always check out Best Buy's top deals first. They are always adding new deals and they rotate in and out. So there's always something new and worth seeing. One week, it might be a new brand of laptops. The next week, it might be some crazy good deal on TVs. You can also become a Best Buy Total Tech member, which gives you even more exclusive deals along with tech support, worry-free product protection, free standard installation, delivery, and haul away. There's also the Best Buy price match guarantee. Find it somewhere cheaper, 
Best Buy will match that price. They can get you your product fast, or if you need it sooner, you can just stop in at your local store and pick it up yourself. If you're in the market for any new check, make sure that you check out Best Buy and their top deals page first. Arr! I still wasn't ready for that. My bad. Next in our lineup is the Galaxy Tab S7 FE. The FE stands for Fan Edition. Samsung releases FE phones and tablets every so often, and what they do is they keep some key features in place. The ones that the users really love while taking out some of the things that maybe you wouldn't notice. Do we need this? Yes, that would be the Bluetooth adapter. So what's the fancy thing that everybody wants on this tablet? That 12.4 inch screen. This is the same size as that S8 Plus, but this takes the performance down a notch or two. What compromises are you making? Well, first of all, the processor is an older Snapdragon 7325, and the screen is not a super AMOLED display, but another one of those LCD displays. Also worth mentioning is that it's not 120 hertz, it has a slower refresh rate. How does this affect drawing? Well, here we have the S8 and the S7 FE drawing side by side in Samsung's Notes app. Not a huge difference, but if you go looking for it, you can definitely find it. You see it more in apps like Clip Studio Paint. The Notes app is super well optimized for Android and specifically for Samsung's hardware. Clip Studio isn't, or maybe it's just doing more. And it goes to show how app optimization is often more important here than the hardware itself, though, Hardware can help. These slowed down drawing tests are fun, but for me, using this in real time, I think drawing on the S7 FE is still really good and honestly, fun. I much prefer drawing on these kind of tablets than I do on, say, a Windows or a Mac computer. It's a great experience. Let's see if that wimpy S6 Lite can handle the pressure. You might be surprised. I have said for two years now that this little guy might be the sneaky best value in drawing tech. I really like this and the entry-level iPad for beginners. Here is something really important to look for if you're considering this tablet. Make sure that the one you are looking at is the new 2022 model. Very important. There's an older model that looks identical, but has an older processor inside. You don't want that. You want the new one. And even though it's only been out for a few months, you could even find it on sale from time to time. Also worth noting is like all of the others here, this does come with the S Pen packed in at no extra cost. It's so small. Why are you so high on it? This is not a screaming fast tablet, not at all. If you can afford something better, you should definitely check out the others. It doesn't have a fingerprint scanner or 120 hertz displays. It makes those compromises for the sake of cost. The reason I'm a fan of this is because it's, it's good enough. If you're a beginner who wants to draw on a screen on the go, this is it. Heck, the Wacom One, which is Wacom's lowest price screen tablet, cost more than this, and it needs to be plugged into a laptop or a desktop computer to even work. And the screen on the S6 Lite blows that out of the water. And get this, this is the crazy part. It's the same pen, seriously, the same pen. You can take the pen from the Wacom One and use it on this tablet and take this tablet's pen and use it on the Wacom. Also, the S6 Lite runs Dex. Dex turns Android tablets into a Windows-like interface for Android. Some people love it. I'm kind of meh on it, but it does run here, and that's good for a lot of people who love that experience. The S6 Lite isn't my first choice, but if you're on a very tight budget, it's a good choice and a good value. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know that sound. That is the question giraffe. Hi, Brad. I want to start animating. Is the S6 Lite good enough for animators? Oh, that is a good question. Um, I'm going to give a controversial answer here and say no. Ooh. Wait, wait. I could explain. Can you do animation on this tablet? Yes. You can. There are lightweight animation apps like Flip a Clip and art apps like Krita and Clip Studio that have frame by frame animation tools. But I'm not sure Android or any tablet is really the best choice necessarily for animation. I feel like the apps you're gonna find on Mac or Windows are just better suited for doing anything longer than a few seconds. Now, if you just wanna play around and learn animation, make some stuff that's only a few seconds long, yes, you can totally do that here. But this video that you're watching here, if you wanna make anything like this, you really wanna go with a desktop operating system. This was done with Adobe Character Animator, a little bit of Adobe Animate, and a lot of Premiere Pro. I could do some drawing on an Android tablet, but I'd have to import it over to the desktop if I wanted to make a video like this one. Also worth noting, if I did it on an Android tablet, it would take months to put out a video instead of a week. Also, animation relies on other skills, skills like audio editing, things you could definitely do on a tablet for sure, 
But I just feel like those kind of tasks are better for desktop applications, especially when we're talking about animation, you end up with a lot of source files. And file management on a tablet is only so-so to begin with. So that is my Samsung tablet roundup. I hope you found it useful. Hit me up down below in the comments to let me know what you think, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.